Well, a lot of people think of April, of course, as Earth Month, but it is also Financial Literacy Month. And I don't know about you, but I always say, hey, I can continue to learn about finances and ways to be smart. But parents out there, what are you teaching your kids about finances? How are your actions impacting the way they're going to look at finances? Well, lucky for you and to give us all something to think about, Kyle Wingfield is back from Finley Alexander Wealth Management. Kyle, good morning. How are you today? Hey, good morning, Natalie. I'm doing well. How are you? I am well. I love that we're talking about this today because I think I, I probably had some conversations that I take for granted, you know, in front of my daughter and I want to set a good state right from the beginning. And it's great timing because you're actually joining us from home. So yeah. I want to dive into talking about you a little bit, your okay. kids, but also you as a child. How would you say that your parents kind of impacted or maybe molded the way that you look at finances? Well, you know, it's interesting. I grew up in a household that, you know, opposites attract. So my dad was this like super saver and my mom was all about enjoy the moment because you just have now, you don't know if you have tomorrow. So I think I had a nice balance growing up, but like anyone else, you know, we spend all this time in school and they never, when do they talk to you about money? They don't. So you pick up your habits of money from your greatest influence, typically your, your parents or whoever is your guardian. You watch how they manage money and that's how you end up managing money. And, and very few households have intentional conversations about money and all the things that surround it. And so my parents did, were like everyone else. They didn't have intentional conversations. The only thing they said is, you better save your money. And I do that. So. And of course, you, a father yourself, have what, three boys under the age of 10. So all in an age group where they might be picking up on things. What are some of the things that you've implemented in your home to instill saving in a healthy relationship with money? Number one, my, my children, they, they love Chick-fil-A. So who does it, right? <laughs> right. So, so the first thing we do, because I think if you can you know, demonstrate something to, to your children, it'll stick. So they order the milkshakes. And as soon as you the milkshake, Natalie, I go, give me that. And I go, what are you doing, Daddy? Don't shut that down. Like, Boom. That's called taxes. Now you understand that's every time daddy earns money, every time mommy earns money, anybody out here earns money, the government does that to you. They yeah. take a certain portion. And then my, my son, Jack, he's the oldest, he's seven. He says, is there any way, if you're going to act like the government, is there any way I can have you take less of my milkshake? I go, now you're talking. Now you're talking. There you go. So you see, that works. So just pick something. That's one thing we do. The other thing I do with my sons is every time that they get some money that they save, we give them money for school, you know, when they get uh, birthday gifts, stuff like that. They'll say, hey, Daddy, can I get a Nintendo Switch game? And I said, okay, how much is it? He's like, it's, it's $49.99. I said, okay, go, go look at your cash. And they go, why don't you take that out and give it up? And then he goes, mm, I don't need the game that badly. <laughs> Done. You know, I feel like, you know, the, the, the milkshake analogy is fabulous. That is something I've never heard of before. And when you do think about kids and money, at least my mind goes to things like chores and the piggy bank and saving. What are your thoughts? When's too early to do that? I'm assuming you still think that those are very important things to sure. do. Oh, it's one, it's never too early. Uh, you know, just like it's never too late, it's never too early. I think as soon as they start to understand, because teaching them about money is you teach them it's a tool first, and you're going to need this to survive, right? You know, you need two things in life. You need your health and you need your income or your money. Uh, you lose either one of those, life kind of stinks. So, yeah, piggy bank saving. Like, hey, when they get money, say, okay, put some away. And then if you want to buy something, show them that they got to use their money. And then when you go to the store or grocery store to shop or you go anywhere to shop or you're shopping online with Amazon, show them how to look for deals and help them understand money that way. And I, I bought my sons when they were four, Jack's seven, Cooper's four. I, I bought them like, you know, the, the cash register and yeah. taught them how to make change and understand the value of money that way. So I think it's just, you, you know, play games with them, make it fun so that they don't connect saving with being sacrificial they see saving as fun. And if they can see saving money as fun, it becomes a positive habit and they start to build up their financial security early. You know what, Kyle, true story. Just the other day in my house, my parents actually had a dollar bill and they asked my four-year-old, what is this? And she's like, oh, it's a ticket. 
And I was like, Ugh, I've got some work to do here with my four year old about, you know, mo actual money, because I know we don't deal with it as much these days. So I know that's one thing I'm working on. And of course, you've talked about some great tips. But overall, adults watching, maybe they want to change the way they're looking at their relationship with money. That's where you can come in and you can help get people on the right track at Finley Alexander Wealth Management. We can. I think my, my one of my favorite sayings is a portfolio is not a plan. And I understand why money can be very, very intimidating for folks, especially if they're headed to retirement or they're already retired. Mm -hmm. They think to themselves like, okay, you save money to spend it. That's the only purpose, Natalie. Right? But you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. So you might have to spend it. But we save money for specific events. Wedding, spend it when the wedding arrives. Car, spend it when the car when it's time to buy a car. Uh, school, so forth and so on. Retirement, oh my gosh. I don't want to spend it because I'm scared I'm going to run out. That means you don't have a spending plan. Yeah. That means you also don't have a plan. But we so helping people understand how to have a plan, a spending plan, so they can have the lifestyle they want. That's what we're excellent at doing. Oh, this has been such a fun segment to talk with you about parenting, finances, all things we need to keep in mind. And of course, we want to be sure to share the contact information so you can get in touch with Kyle and his team today. There's the website, of course, the Facebook page as well. Kyle, we hope to see you again soon. We always enjoy our conversations. You got it.